When it comes to computers and deciding what to buy amongst photographers and filmmakers, there seems to only ever be one area of focus and that is performance. But I've always disagreed with that. I think it's the wrong way of looking at a computer as a creative. Because yes, performance matters, but if it's the only thing that you focus on, you're gonna miss out on so much. Ultimately, everyone needs something different. And sometimes professionals don't mind compromising a little bit on that performance for a better user experience. For me, a big non-performance factor that has been really important has been portability. And to be perfectly honest, over the years, I've had a bit of a battle in my mind between portability and performance. Since I bought my first Mac way back in 2010, I've been a fan of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. This is my first one, I, I still have it. I used it for a video last year and I've upgraded over the years, of course. First I upgraded to an iMac, which was good, except it, it wasn't a laptop and I, I really missed the practicalities of a laptop. So then after that, I upgraded to a MacBook Pro, a 13 inch one again, and this was one of the first few with the uh, OLED touch bar and it's been a great computer. It served me really well, but still towards the end of last year, I found myself in need of an upgrade. And yet again, I, I was looking at iMacs. So I was in a cycle of sorts where I'd compromise on performance and get a laptop. And then I wouldn't want to compromise anymore and I'd get an iMac. But then Apple announced the M1 MacBook Pros, the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pros. And for me as an intensive photo and video editor, that announcement had me thinking that finally I could close that gap between performance and portability and that there'd be no more need for compromise. And I, I, I had to get one, so. So I did and I've now had it for about a month and it is nothing short of amazing. And I really wanted to make a short video this week where I, I just basically talked about my computer because this is probably the most significant performance upgrade I've had in a computer ever really, even when I went from a MacBook Pro to an iMac. And I know I just spent the whole intro saying how performance isn't the only thing that is important, but this little computer somehow managed to get nearly everything else right as well as performance. And that's the point I guess I'm trying to make in this video. I also hope to add a different kind of perspective from what's typically here on YouTube because I, like most normal people, don't actually upgrade my computer every single year. I upgrade it every three years. And with that, a lot of my friends and family say that I upgrade my computer too often. But yeah, my point of reference for this whole video is my last MacBook Pro, which was a late 2017, 13 inch, which I've already sold. So I haven't actually got it here with me, but the specs are as follows. The processor was a 3.1 gigahertz dual core Intel i5 with the integrated Intel Iris Plus graphics, eight gigabytes of RAM and 250 56 gigabytes of storage. And when I bought it from the Apple store, it cost me $2,447.50. As for my new M1 Mac, it has the M1 chip with the eight core CPU, eight core GPU, the 16 core neural engine thing. And I upgraded to 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. And even with those upgrades, that cost me $2,419. So it was actually about $30 cheaper and it's very close price wise. So I think it's fair enough to compare these two computers. And even if it wasn't fair, I, I would compare it because th these are the computers I had and now have. Me being me, the very first app that I installed on my computer was Final Cut Pro. I opened up a project and I ran export tests on both of them just to see what I was getting for my money. I did four different exports in four different compression formats that I typically use. 8-bit HEVC, H.264, H.264 faster in code, and H.264 better quality. Correspondingly, it was 3.6 times faster, 2.7 times faster, 3.7 times, and then 3.6 times faster. So that's a minimum improvement of 2.7 times, which you can really notice that when you're editing. Another thing that I noted is that now in Final Cut Pro, I can edit in the better quality preview rather than better performance, which has made a world of difference when editing my content where I talk about photography. I also did one other test just out of curiosity to see how quickly the software can launch into your most recent project that you've had open. And for that test, it took 20 seconds on the Intel machine and eight seconds on the M1 chip. The next thing that I think is a big deal, a big positive for the new M1 MacBook Pro is the thermals. You can actually now use a MacBook Pro on your lap. It's a laptop. And since I bought it, I haven't actually heard the fan run, which for me is a very subtle but important quality of life improvement because now I can just use the computer to chill. After that, the next noteworthy thing is the new keyboard. And I know it's not new this year. It was new about two years ago or something like that, where they switched from the famously terrible keyboard to the better keyboard. I didn't mind the terrible keyboard, but I do definitely prefer 
this new one. Also, the um, actual physical escape key is kind of good to have. And finally, as they heavily marketed, battery life is just crazy. It's really good. It's everything they say it is. I can spend a whole day using my computer without having to charge it. And that's using Final Cut Pro and browsing the internet on Chrome and writing in Google Docs and doing stuff that isn't super heavy use, but there are moments of heavy use in Final Cut, but it's not perfect. There's two things that I don't like about it. I don't like how they made gaps in their arrow keys. I know this was a thing that they changed when they changed the keyboard, because apparently people preferred the old system that used to be on the really old MacBook Pros. But my one argument to that is when you look at the Magic Keyboard, it's got that same system. And this is what every iMac uses. And I use it when I'm editing on this computer at my desk, so I don't hurt my neck as much. And it's now annoying to have to switch between the two. And the second thing that I don't like is that there's only two Thunderbolt ports. And it is a small change in the process that I use my computer, but it, it gets annoying every time. And I also wish that it was one port on either side rather than two on the same side. It's a very nitpicky detail, but that just goes to show how good of a computer this is and how much I like it. But yeah, those are my general thoughts about my new M1 MacBook Pro. I've really enjoyed it. It's not perfect, no machine ever is, but this is just about the closest to perfect that I've gotten so far and I really like it. But I can't end this video without bringing up a thing that personally hasn't affected me much, but it might affect you. And that is third party apps, particularly Adobe apps. You wanna check if the compatibility is good and how buggy it is. Uh, I've heard Premiere isn't so good, but in my use, Lightroom Classic and Photoshop has worked fine. I've even noticed a difference using it with Rosetta. If anything, it's run smoother, but uh, I just haven't noticed it. I haven't had a single bug in Photoshop on Rosetta yet, but it's only been a month and I, I get a bug a month. So maybe I'm just due for another bug. But yeah, watch some reviews specific to the software that you use. But yeah, uh, the video is over now. Thank you for watching. If you want to watch more videos, there's videos on the screen. This is how YouTube works. You've probably been here before. I will see you next week with another video about photography and filmmaking, not about computers. Um, my Mac set up and the box has been unned. So, cut to the next scene.